Hello and welcome to Manga Tora 96 and today we have the review of the long awaited chapter 1000 of One Piece. Thus One Piece enters a selected circle that only a few manga manage to achieve. Some of the more famous manga in that circle are Detective Conan and Hajime no Ippo. On this week's Shonen Jump cover we have the other half of the author serialized in Jump drawing One Piece characters. Some of the more notable ones are Yuki Tabata, the mangaka of Black Clover drawing Shirahoshi. And I must say he didn't cover himself in glory with this drawing, because Shirahoshi's face looked just awful. Then we have Akutami Gige, the mangaka of Jujutsu Kaisen drawing Arlong and Kentaro Yabuki, the mangaka of Ayakashi Triangle drawing Sugar, which is a shame when we consider his art style, that he didn't choose a hotter female One Piece character, for example like Sugar's big sister Monet, no that would have been a treat. As well we got the second half of the big color spread that Oda drew for chapters 999 and 1000. On this half we see Luffy, Nami, Brooke and Jinbei. Now going into the chapter that's called Straw Hat Luffy, which is a fitting title for the 1000th chapter. We see Luffy arriving before the stairs that lead to the rooftop, where he meets the Minx, who defeated all the enemies. Which is a nice touch seeing the difference between the experienced Mink warriors and Carrot, who was done after using Sulong in Whole Cake, but the Musketeers and Guardians after using Sulong and fighting Jack, Nangi and the other subordinates, they have enough strength to defeat every enemy on the 5th floor, that way clearing the path for Luffy. It shows that Carrot has a lot to learn. It was also a nice touch for Luffy to thank the Minx for protecting Raizo back in Zo, which wasn't the last callback to Zo in this chapter. On the performance floor we see King and Queen trying to stop Marco and we see that Queen is indeed a cyborg because he stretches his neck that reveals metal parts in an attempt to reach Marco, but I'm not sure what he was trying to do, because to me it looks like he was trying to fight Marco with just his head, which is a brilliant idea considering how many brilliant ideas Queen had this arc, from removing Luffy's sea prison cuffs to giving the antidote for the ice only virus to Apu. Good job Queen, I mean with allies like Queen who needs enemies anymore. Moving on from this rant, Marco grabs both King and Queen with his flames, stopping them and then he throws Zoro through the hole up the roof, which was a good idea on Toda's part, because if Zoro took the same route as Kit, Killer and Luffy took to get to the roof, he would have just got lost, but with having Marco throw Zoro on the roof, even Zoro can screw this up, so he got up on time for the big battle. In the storeroom Yamato is giving Momo Oden's logbook. Then she explains that she found the logbook on the day Oden died, near Oden castle and she says that someone protected the logbook. My guess is that Tuki dropped it intentionally or not, I'm not sure, and she escaped the burning castle. Yamato explained that Oden and the Roger pirates predicted that a little over 20 years, a new generation of young pirates who will arrive in the new world will carry the burden of the next era, while simultaneously seeing shots of Law and Kit. Yamato thought that Ace would be the one leading the new era, but she didn't count on Akaino killing Ace. After Yamato learned to face his death, she remembers that Ace told her what Luffy said to him and Sabo. After hearing this, Yamato starts to cry, because Luffy said the exact same words that Goldie Roja said to Whitebeard and Odin. After hearing that somebody else said the exact same words like Luffy, Ace tells Yamato that he wants to have a drink with that person, which is quite ironic as the person Yamato was referring to was Roger, and Ace with his daddy issues hated him very much. We also learned that Yamato was the one who made Ace's viewer card, and they parted ways with a promise to see each other again. Man, Ace broke a lot of promises, didn't he? that now Luffy has to keep in his place. After leaving this brief flashback, we see the arrival of when the wind has Yes, the winged hussars have arrived gloriously on their mighty horses, like those horses from Kingdom, and with their trademark wings on their backs, like in 1683, when they freed Vienna from the Ottoman siege. 
No, they have come to free Wano from Kaido's rule, or that is what I want to say. But in reality, we see Luffy finally arriving on the roof. Like any good protagonist, he arrived last to the party. Then we see a epic double page spread. On one side, Kit, Killer, Luffy, Zoro and Law. And on the other side, Kaido and Big Mom, staring at each other. What's interesting in this spread is that it isn't one big panel, but rather separated. On the left panel, you have the two Yonkos, representing the old generation. And on the right panel, you have the Supernova, representing the new generation. Also, it's interesting for what angle Oda decided to depict this stare-down. We all knew that a double spread like this was coming, sooner or later. But I always envisioned that it would look similar to Kaido's introduction, in which he towers over Luffy and Ko, symbolizing how big the difference between them is. But with this angle that Oda chooses, the spread looks like equals facing off and not a David against Goliath situation. And with what Luffy displayed a bit later in this chapter, and if the other four can follow along, then this angle makes perfect sense. To finish this spread, we see what Odin wrote in his logbook, predicting that this situation would happen 20 years in the future, and that should he be dead, the new generation of pirates will take down Kaido. That is the reason why Toki used her powers to send the samurai exactly 20 years into the future, because she believed in Odin's prediction, and bet everything on the new generation of pirates. How could cool Odin predict those events? I'm not sure. But I'm sure he based those predictions on what he learned on Love Tale. And we will have to wait for that to be answered when someday Luffy lands on Love Tale. After that, we see that Luffy isn't just made out of rubber, but that he also possesses balls made out of sea prism stone. Luffy just casually walks between the two Yonkos and ignores them completely, which irritates Kaido, who tries to provoke Luffy. Meanwhile, Luffy gets to Kinemon, who is on the floor, barely conscious. After that, we see shots of every Akazaya samurai beaten to a bloody pulp. But it seems that no one died, which is a shame. I'm in the camp that says that all nine should die, because they are Odin samurai and not Momos, which is proven again this chapter when Kinemon says that he can't face Odin in the afterlife. Momo needs samurai who will follow him for who he is, and not just for being the son of Kozuki Oden. And those samurai need to help Momo rebuild Wano. And I'm not so sure that the Akazaya samurai fit the bill. And that's why I don't see a purpose for the Akazaya beyond this battle. Also it will be quite tragic. And that's what we need to happen at some point in this battle. Luffy assures Kinemon that he will save Wano and ask Klo to teleport the Akazaya samurai somewhere down below. Kaido, running out of patience, attacks Luffy with his cannibal, which Luffy easily dodges, then he uses Gear 3. Before Luffy attacks, we got a montage of scenes like Raizo is safe, the death of Yasue and more, before we see Luffy landing a blow on Kaido. And Kaido coughs up blood, as Luffy slams him into the ground. Luffy used a new Gear 3 technique called Red Rock. But what's interesting is that while using this technique, Luffy somehow generates fire like when he uses Red Hawk. We see both Kaido and Big Mom genuinely shocked at what happened. Luffy then says to them that he will surpass both of them. And then he says what we heard a million times throughout this story so far and it never gets old. Now he won't become the king of the Swedish Empire, but rather Luffy says that he will become the Pirate King. On that note ends chapter 1000. The chapter was enjoyable, the only minor criticism is that no one of the Akazai Samurai has died yet, that is. Other than that, the thing to take from this chapter is that Luffy managed to injure Kaido in that with just a gear free attack, showcasing how much stronger he's gotten since fighting Kaido in Act 1. No, I don't believe that he is yet capable of defeating any of the Yonko in a one on one, but with this he's shown that he is capable of fighting against them and injuring them, and with the help of Zoro, Kid, Killer, Law, 
and anyone else who will join this fight later. Defeating two Yonkos doesn't look as impossible like it looked before this chapter. Nor was this chapter worth all the hype and expectation surrounding it. Well, it depends what you expected from this chapter. If you expected some big revelation that it could easily be a bad chapter for you. But if you remove the 1000 chapter hype from it, then I'm sure that we all can agree that it was a great chapter of One Piece. And that will be all for this video. If you like this video, leave a like, leave your thoughts in the comments below, or subscribe to the channel for more One Piece content, as well as other manga content, and until next time, take care.